Welcome to the Proven Principles Podcast by Knowing Hospitality, the show that deconstructs and demystifies the inner workings of the hotel industry. Here's your host, Adam Knight. Alex, it's great to have you on the show, man. Thanks for being here. It's great to be here. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, of course. Anytime. So um, maybe before we kick off here, uh, if any listeners don't know what Alice is, why don't you give us a quick, uh, quick run through of what, what the platform is, what the services that you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. So Alice is an operations software for hotels. And what hotels use us for is to manage all of their staff, all of their work, communicate with guests. So you imagine if you're a housekeeper or a concierge or a front desk, maintenance, basically anyone who works in a hotel logs into Alice and that's where they track all of their work, all of their communication between departments, all, and they can communicate with guests on top of that through SMS texting and then through APIs that plug into all the in-room technology. And so we built Alice uh, about eight years ago. We named it after the housekeeper in the Brady Bunch because she looks after the family and we look after the hotel. And we have grown to work with about two and a half thousand hotels now, predominantly three to five star hotels that are providing great service. And now, especially in these times, right, making a far greater impact with the Lena team, really yeah. getting stuff done with skeleton crew. Yeah, absolutely. More uh, kind of workflow management and just making sure that things can stay tight. Oh, I mean, I'm sure we're going to talk about this, but it's like almost like where hotels should have evolved 10 years ago. And now it's just being forced on us. And it's great for technology. Yeah, absolutely. So um, why don't you maybe give us a run through on, you know, how did you get to where you are today? What was your, your career path and, and how you ended up to be a co-founder and president of Alice? Yeah. So, so funnily enough, my father was in the hotel industry. Um, he built a brand called Mao Maison in the UK. And I mean, they built about, they almost had a hundred hotels at, at the largest point. And so I grew up working in hotels, loving hotels, very fortunate to stay in really nice hotels. Um, and I just love them, obsessed with hotels. And, um, but that's absolutely not why I started at Alice. I went to university in the States. I met uh, my co-founder, Justin Efron at the University of Pennsylvania. We graduated, we both went into finance. I was at Goldman, he was at City. And we traveled right before we started our real jobs. And the travel experience just seemed so broken. I mean, we were in Asia and they don't speak your language. and. The check-in process is really complicated. And so when I came back, he had wanted to start this company that he terribly named Easy Traveler. And the idea was, was could you do airline check-in? So could you build a way that you can check into a hotel using your phone, print a key at the kiosk, pick your room, skip the front desk, similar to how you do an airport. Um, and I, I thought that was interesting, but I thought it was also very difficult to do that really successfully. You have to build a PMS and as hoteliers know, building a brain of a fur hotel and then selling it to a hotelier when you're a 23 year old schmuck from outside the industry, very difficult. But the small piece that was really interesting with that was the mobile side of it. And eight years ago, Uber was becoming popular, people were ordering food through food delivery apps. And so we actually started Alice to build an app for hotels. And then what we realized is you need to connect that app to the services, otherwise it's not called service on demand, mm -hmm. right? And so like Uber would not be Uber if no driver was on it. Right. And you pressed a button and they sent you a message saying, hey, thanks for your request. Look outside your window and hopefully mm -hmm. a car might arrive. So we need to connect staff. And then you realize staff are not on software and there's all those challenges. So we completely pivoted and realized the best way to help a hotel help a guest was to build hotel staff the right technology they need to operate in this century. Mm -hmm. No, I love that. And actually, you know, funny enough, thinking back to maybe the original idea of having airline style kiosk check-in in hotels, might have been a bit of ahead of its time, considering yeah. where we are today, where you know we sort of reverted back to as little contact as possible. But that's not really the idea behind Alice, is it? It's really just to connect and maybe take out the middleman between, between the request and get, maybe going through a phone operator or going through a front desk to eventually get to the person delivering the service. Exactly, and, and the funny thing is it's come full circle because once you put that in the back end, now you can build a front end. Now you can build great guest experiences. So we might not be the company doing it all for you, but we enable the next Alice to come along and, and plug into our software, right? Yeah, so right. you have, if you have a kid who's 23 and wants to build an app, suddenly there is software to connect it to, right? Yeah. And where we didn't have that. And so, yeah, Alice is completely staff-based. All our users are staff, but then there's this whole guest communication layer on top. And during COVID, it's been, I mean, it's, fly, I mean, it's shooting through the roof because no one wants to be, have to stand in the lobby 
or pick up a room service menu. And so there's just so many opportunities for contactless communication now. Yeah, 100%. So, you know, working with the hotels that you're seeing, I'm sure you talk to a lot of hoteliers, hotel owners, operations managers uh, every day. I mean, what are you <laughs> seeing in the market right now? What's, uh, I mean, at the high level, we all know what's going on, but you know, if you, if you scratch yeah. the surface a little bit, what are you, what are you seeing? What are you hearing? Um, yeah, so every, I, I, let's not talk about anything everyone knows, right? Industry's coming back, mm-hmm. places are spiking, then they open. We have hundreds of hotels opening. Let's just assume everyone understands that. So I think the few things that have surprised us is we've never seen hoteliers turn to technology quicker than in the past. And it self, sounds self-serving. You don't need to go with Alice, right? It's just simply you're bringing back hotels with the same amount of services almost and with half the amount of staff. Mm. And the only, only way to do that is have better processes. And the only way to do that is through software. Um, you're bringing back new rules and the hotel industry has to evolve. So now suddenly all these things you should have invested in five years ago, like guest SMS, front and center. Um, but I think two of the things that really surprised me were I can't believe how difficult our hoteliers are finding it to hire back their teams. You know, thanks to the government stimulus program, unemployment has never been friendlier mm-hmm. in the U S and so it's actually surprising. Our hotels are really struggling to hire. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because we've always h- struggled to hire in this industry because there's so many other opportunities to work in hospitality, whether it's you know, alternative accommodation or these online services now. So hiring is, has been really difficult and now it's difficult for a different reason, mm-hmm. which is unemployment's never looked nicer. And then on the guest side, what I think is what I was shocked by is we spent three months with the entire industry figuring out how to protect ourselves, like how to do the COVID measures and the COVID checklist and the PP&E and uh, all the protective equipment and the screens and the lines. And, mm-hmm. and then guests, well, at least what we're seeing is not for everyone. They don't care. They're like yeah. booking these hotels that are outside the city and they just want to escape COVID. They want... They want the leisure. They want the restaurants. Mm-hmm. I'm in Aspen right now. Mm-hmm. Packed. Town wow. is packed. I don't want to wow. go there. But the what I'm so so almost I think hoteliers spent so much time focusing on, hey, will guests feel comfortable coming to us again? That we mm-hmm. kind of did and us too, we lost sight of, hey, when they come to us, what are they gonna really want? Mm-hmm. And it's not it's not masks. They want you to have masks. It's important. But it's almost like you need to bring your concierge back immediately and have them call every restaurant and every business in the local area and figure out the new plan of experience, right? Here's all you can mm-hmm. do that's safe because guests are not coming to hotels to do nothing. They, they find they've been cooped up for three months. They want that leisure back. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, you know, to think about how important the messaging was about safety and PPE and social distancing and now to be opening back up, people don't, to your point, they don't want to be reminded of that. And, and so these drive destinations like Aspen, like some of the areas around Seattle uh, where I'm at, very busy. But you go to some of these downtown locations, like downtown Seattle is dead. There's, there's nobody yeah. here. Even though hotels, you know, we're seeing some hotels start to open, but there's some still aren't open yet. Uh, and we're talking, you know, big name properties well, in, in city center locations. I guess as, guests have always wanted experience. Nothing's changed. I mean, we saw it um, in Miami. Miami was fully booked. For July fourth, and then the beach is closed, and twenty five percent of that of those booking canceled, right? Because they were coming for the beach; they're not coming for the protective equipment. So, yeah, city we're seeing definitely urban properties are really struggling, where hotels outside of cities are killing it. Yeah, yeah, that's. I mean, we we could go down that rabbit hole and talk about the reasons why, but uh, you know, the the fact is is that um, you know people are starting to travel, and as hoteliers, we need to think about the discrete delivery of, of safe service. That's maybe, maybe a clumsy way of saying it, but you know, if people don't want to see, uh, uh, you don't want to lead with a marketing message that we're all about safety and security. That's just going to become the expectation, just like Wi-Fi, just like hot water. So put that in place. You still need to have the fundamentals of great service delivery uh, and, and execution. And that's you know, a big part of what your platform provides to hotels. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like every business. You, you think about what do you have to do to exist, right? And so that's what you're mm-hmm. saying. And then, and then the, the really good businesses, like do that as table stakes. And then they think about what do we have to do to win? Mm-hmm. And what do we have to do to delight and to excite and to build a brand and loyalty? And, and, and it's not the protective equipment. It's, it's, moving, it's moving past that. Yeah, exactly. So you know, even as hotels are starting to see some increased occupancy, um, we're, to your point earlier, we're, we're still not seeing people come back to work 
at the same rate as they were leaving their jobs, you know, because of COVID before. So, uh, you know, there's many reasons for that. There's no business in some locations. Uh, maybe the, uh, the unemployment is uh, too lucrative and it kind of keeps some people out of the market. Whatever the reason is, you know, hotels have to operate on smaller teams and it gets harder and harder to do as occupancy ramps up. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, how, how are you seeing from your perspective that's working? So, yeah, so I think that, that that's right, right? Because while the domestic leisure market is going very well, businesses are not traveling yet, corporates are not traveling yet. That's the bread and butter of a lot of the industry. Um, and then, then some hotels are restricted as well, so you can't have full occupancy. Um, so we're seeing less people come back. Um, what we're seeing is the, the hotels, that what you're bringing back is you bring back the staff with character because mm -hmm. where possible outside of unions, you need someone who's going to be multi-skilled who's going to be willing to be a concierge and a front desk, right? Who's going to be willing to be um, housekeeping and, you know, run it, right? And so like, you need these uh, people who are very happy to roll their sleeves up and do a lot, work together as a smaller team. I mean, smaller teams can achieve a tremendous amount if they communicate well. Um, on the technology side, we're seeing guest messaging is really helpful. Um, if you don't have guests in your lobby and on the phone, how do you, a uh, guest can text you, you can then work with that. You can, it's easier to work with 10 texts than 10 phone calls, right? Right now, if I had 10 of my 100%. team call, 10 of my team call you or 10 text you, you're going to have a better service outcome with the 10 texts because right. you can prioritize which messages to, to do and you can have templated responses for some of them. Um, we're seeing housekeeping changing a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Housekeeping is now opt in. So hotels need to figure out technology processes to know which rooms to clean because they have to clean a lot less. But right. when they do clean them, they have to clean them a lot heavier, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of this trip. So I just think it's like, you know, you have these, you have these individuals who really know each part of the business and have to start adapting their operations to the new environment. Yeah. There's a huge amount of job expansion, isn't there? You know, if you had, yeah. you know, just a, a front desk agent is doing so much more today, even just as the typical front desk duties, right? Because they probably are cleaning a little bit more. They're yeah. probably being a little bit more aware of their surroundings. Um, and, you know, that plays kind of right into... Uh, you know, training and educational aspects of what hospitality um, is all about, you know, being able to provide those services across different lines. Uh, and I know you guys are doing a lot of work with educating uh, yeah. people in the industry. Uh, maybe can you tell us a little bit about what's going on there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've put a lot, of a lot of great content out there. Um, we've always thought of ourselves as thought leaders in, in how hotels adopt technology. Um, but originally it was like, why should you? And that's how. So we're doing a lot of the how, which we haven't done in the past. We put out an ebook that has um, a lot of the best practices. We took a look at every guideline that exists on, on COVID and then say, well, which of them fit technology? And which tech can technology help you with? And then um, put guidelines on that, right? Quite literally like an ebook on like, here's what you can text your guests and here's how you can build your room service menu on a Google doc and send it to your guests, right? These are easy things to do if you just mm -hmm. take the time to, to put them in place. So we are happy to talk about them deeper. Uh, we ran a podcast series. So we had some great hoteliers come on mm -hmm. and speak about um, what they're seeing and how they're going to evolve. Um, but it's not just us. I think the whole industry, I mean, I've seen like company like Avio, they're a booking engine out of originally Ireland, but they're, they're pretty big in Europe and U S they put out a free digital Academy for digital marketing. Mm -hmm. And I was speaking to them about it. And so like, it's not digital market is taking it. It's a lot of roles taking it. It's like people, yeah. as we just talked about, expanding their knowledge of how a hotel works to be better equipped, to be hired back quicker. And I think we have to not kid ourselves. You know, hotels will see ho these themselves running with less staff. And I think it's going to take a long time if ever to come back to the full hiring level we were at before, because mm -hmm. like any business, if someone can do the job of two, the owner's going to say, okay, do the job of two. And, that's the reality and it, it, it's a shame, but it, it's also something you have to be ready for. Yeah, no, that's so true. Um, you know, I, there, there's so much free content out there right now. I mean, you know, even I, I took advantage of, you know, learning about SEO and, and doing some master classes. you know, there's, there's some really great stuff out there that, you know, if you can expose yourself to it and, and you just, all you have to do is do a really quick Google search to find some of these free webinars and free eBooks uh, like you're talking about um, that people can take advantage of. It's, it's huge right now. That's really kind of a turning point, I think, in our industry. You know, you're talking about, and I totally agree with you, that, you know, as we come back, we're not going to have the same level of 
uh, of staffing in hotels. It's going to take a long time to get back there. So how do you make yourself more marketable as somebody who needs to try to get back into the industry? And this is the yeah. way you do that. And, and the industry is coming together. I've never seen so much collaboration between competing hotel brands and competing technology vendors. I mean, if you're, if you're a technology vendor or let's call it a CIO of a hotel group mm -hmm. and you're not, you're not on the weekly HT and G calls, mm -hmm. like what are you doing? There's a, they do a weekly call on the rebound where a hundred of the smartest people in the industry get together every Wednesday and share what they're seeing. And if, if you're not using that shared knowledge that is free to access, Mm -hmm. You're just going to fall behind and you're going to miss things. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So, you know, as we, as we're kind of hotels starting to reopen right now and, you know, I, I can't help but have this sense of there's maybe a false optimism right now um, yeah. that, you know, you're seeing some star data come out, you know, national occupancy, national ADR is starting to creep up a little bit. You know, I think we're in the, the mid 40s, maybe high 40% occupancies nationally. Um, obviously that's very, probably very skewed regionally uh, and by, you know, certain hotels in certain markets. Uh, Cause you know, like I said, Seattle, for example, is far below that. Um, are there any, w with that in mind, are there any assumptions that, that as a hospitality industry or maybe that Alice in, in the team uh, at your company made early days of COVID that, that maybe turned out to be wrong or conversely, maybe turned out to be right. You know, did we, have we missed the mark on anything? Um, no, I, I think yes and no, right? So we talked a little bit about how we kind of missed the mark on what guests might want immediately coming back, right? And the amount of money. Um, and, and maybe we didn't see how hard it would be to rehire. We thought like, look, there's so many people unemployed. It's going to be cherry picking hiring and mm -hmm. it's a bit more difficult than that. Um, but what, what we did notice, and this is some of our earlier work. So we, we were seeing all of our hotels shut down. And then what we realize is huh, most of our hotels have never shut down, right? So true. Most hotels that we work with are not seasonal. We have right. a huge amount of seasonal hotels and they, they are trained professionals at shutting down and reopening. Most hotels were built to keep running. Mm -hmm. um, so we almost had to sit there and educate and we built these like COVID checklists around reopening and closing hotels, like funny and simple things like flushing the toilet, like getting 10 people to flush the toilet at the same time to make sure the plumbing works. Right. right. These are, you take these for granted because you never, you've never done that. Um, but what I, what I did see is, you know, for the first time when our industry stopped, it was an opportunity to actually start implementing some change. Um, because, you know, when your train is moving, you, you can't really make, it's hard to make changes when things are in motion mm -hmm. anywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but when it stops, it creates an opportunity. It's kind of like when the financial crisis happened and, and loads of people started startups because right. they suddenly, took the risk because that they had stopped in life. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we funnily enough, we didn't see this coming. We've seen a lot of hotels calling us about our housekeeping technology, about our messaging technology. And it's like, now is the time to implement it. But then at the same time, they're running very low cash. Mm -hmm. So they don't have the ability to, to make expenses. So I think those who have been, been more flexible where they say, okay, no problem. We'll get you up and running now and pay us next year. That's mm -hmm. worked really well. Oh, wow. And, and that's worked really well for the industry and for the, the industry providers because both sides have been hurt. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think we assumed we would be locked down for as long as we were mm -hmm. as well. I think, I think that really hurt. Um, but otherwise, I think we're, we're starting to see a rebound. We're starting to see optimism. There's obviously a fear that it's all pent up demand, right? Mm -hmm. So that, as you said, mm -hmm. maybe it's false optimism. I don't know. I think people will keep traveling. The government's a maybe about to introduce another stimulus where you, you get 8,000 in travel credit. Mm -hmm. If you travel domestically, that's great. It's going to be more travel. I think the big fear is how long is it going to take for business travel and corporate travel to come back? Right. Um, and I don't know the answer to that. You know, I know that our team are not traveling as much unless they have to go launch a hotel. They're not traveling for sales. They're not going to mm -hmm. conferences right now. And I think that's a real fear and it's going to take a while. Yeah. Are you guys thinking that's going to be the case through the rest of the year? Are you looking beyond 2020? So I think it is going to be the case. I don't think it's going to return till next summer. Mm -hmm. um, we're in the travel in the travel space, so we travel for work. So we're you know a, a little a different breed. We ha we travel for work. We go launch hotels. We go to hotel conferences. But I can't imagine companies that are not in the travel space traveling for work as much as they used to, unless they absolutely have to. Um, yeah. so yeah, I think it, 
I think we need to be ready for that. I think the industry needs to prepare for a very slow return to profit level. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, we, there's a lot of news uh, about tech companies not traveling, doing business travel, online meetings and conferences uh, are getting canceled and whatnot. Uh, but what you don't hear about is the smaller offices, you know, the accounting firms, the law firms, the advertising mm-hmm. companies that um, that don't make the news that are also not going into the offices that are not traveling anymore for work. So yeah, to your point, I think it's going to take some time. There's no doubt about it. But what I can promise you is it will return. I mean, I, I, yeah. I'm sure all of you have done an online summit. It mm-hmm. doesn't replace the ability to meet someone, to talk to someone, to, to run into people that you wouldn't have otherwise seen. So, you know, maybe it's a vaccine, maybe mm-hmm. it's herd immunity. There is a trigger point. It, we will go back to normal. I will, as I will always want the softest bed sheets, not the, not the safest bed sheets. It's just <laughs> that, that I think we are creatures of habit. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, you mentioned that the team, your team went through, uh, you know, put together the ebook, put together opening checklists and, and different operational checklists. Did you work with any uh, experts in the field uh, or, or any other agencies to put these together to make them as, uh, uh, as available as possible? You know, because obviously there's different regulations across the board in different, different jurisdictions. Um, what was the process you guys took to do that? So I, we start everything with hiring. We, I mean, to his credit, we brought in a, um, an industry expert called Jeffrey Parker to be our head of hospitality in these times. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has a years of experience with Red Lion and other brands. Um, he's been incredible. Every Tuesday, we do a weekly all hands with the whole company and we teach people on the industry. And we've turned that teaching into teaching people on the COVID rebound. Wow. And we take, the, we take the philosophy of ours that if you... Like if you want to build a Navy, don't tell people how to build ships, but teach them to long for the sea. So that's how we approach it. We bring in a team and teach them how hotel, hotels work. And Jeff's been instrumental behind our COVID checklists and behind our education and kind of putting together our strategy mm-hmm. and keeping a pulse on the industry. Um, but otherwise, you know, the, t- the main organization we, we work with is, is HTNG. They mm-hmm. set the standards for hotel technology. Um, we um, have volunteered to run the COVID recovery group everyone is welcome to join it and it's not it's a forum for everyone to get on and share notes right like Mm -hmm. not just how hotels reopen i we had a problem it's like how are we going to allow our staff to travel safely and so rather than coming up with our own travel guidelines we reached out to some of our competitors and said what are you doing Mm -hmm. and why don't we come up with a with a standard travel policy for our own teams who are going to hotels to launch them right yeah No, love that. Uh, Actually, what we'll do is in the show notes, we'll link to some of the resources that you just said so people can go check it out uh, on their own. I think that's super, super valuable. Um, Do you guys do any uh, work? Are there any best practices that you can um, share with people about? I know this is like a rough transition here, so forgive forgive the the segue. But, you know, getting into direct booking, because I've had so many conversations with people about, you know, do we rely on the OTAs or do we try to go at making enough noise to drive direct booking at our hotels. Uh, and that is obviously a debate that happens when times are good. Um, it's getting a lot more um, discussion now, way more relevant, I think. Um, are you guys doing any work in that space? Is there anything that's available to people uh, through Alice? Yeah. So it's not, we don't work in the direct booking space per se, right? We're not a booking engine. In fact, funnily enough, our biggest investor is an OTA, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that doesn't mean I'm not going to talk about what I really think is happening, which I think this is an opportunity for direct booking because mm-hmm. take my own experience. I wanted to go on my, I wanted a three year anniversary. I wanted to go somewhere with my wife. I looked up where I can drive to and I called the hotel and asked them, you know, what are you, are you open? What are you doing about COVID? Is your spa open? Like, what can I do? Like that level of information that now you need from a hotel because nothing is taken for granted can be done best direct. Mm-hmm. So this is a huge opportunity for, I, I think for hotels to receive phone calls that they would have never received before and to convert direct booking. And I think then the opportunity is, are you training and giving the technology to your team who receives that phone call to make sure that when I do arrive, everything we've talked about is realized, Mm -hmm. right? So like, is your reservation team trained to go into Alice and write a note for the front desk and the concierge and here's what they're looking for and here's why they're coming and here's why it's gluten-free and you have all this information. And if you do that well, suddenly I might think, wow, that direct booking experience was actually really great. I Mm -hmm. just, they knew me better than any hotels ever know me because I was not just another number on an online booking engine. And so I think there's a huge opportunity for 
at least leisure direct booking mm -hmm. that should really be capitalized on right now by hotels. The challenge is they've obviously furloughed a lot of staff. Reservations seem to have been furloughed. <laughs> so it's like you're fighting the opportunity against the reality of your staffing level. And it's, you know, it's obviously a challenge. Yeah. And to your point, you got to have the right tools in place to be able to, to do that. Um, and, you know, SMS texting is such a great way to leverage the ability to connect with people after they've gone through the booking process, right? So you can Absolutely. reconfirm all those, those details, welcome them to the hotel, pass on whatever you want to pass on. It's, it's something that I think over the years, you know, more hotels are obviously doing it, but it's the execution has been a little clunky um, yeah. and it's not fully adopted yet. I can't imagine why it's not at hundred percent of hotels. And I mm -hmm. think maybe it's because in the past you just didn't think about it or didn't, didn't, you know, want to evolve. Now put yourself in a guest shoes. There's not a single guest in the world unless you're like maybe someone like Mariah Carey who is not going to give you their phone number right. so that there's an option to text. So now you have the opportunity to get almost a hundred percent of your guests texting you, right? What I would probably do, and I'm sure there's some fancier technologies to do it, but I would probably get one of my team who likes tech to get on a Google sites, mm -hmm. create a Google site for us that shows our room service menu, our COVID safety policies and our op what's open, what's closed. You can easily edit them every day and every week that it changes. Mm -hmm. Right. And within an hour to, to f five hours, you could have a beautiful Google site up and running that you just mm -hmm. text the link to all your guests. And Done. you don't need to repeat the same phone calls. You don't need to keep asking the same questions. They can order through text. They can ask questions through text. I'd probably have the concierge run it because they're the they're trained guest experts. But mm -hmm. if not the concierge, pick someone. And yeah. voila, you've just basically run your COVID communication policy. Just like that. And you know, if you've got- I, I think uh, so. Yeah, and if you got a little bit of uh, you know uh, site building education, you know on the side as a as a secondary skill uh, that you learned through the closure, uh, you know you've just provided more value to your organization. You know you've learned those yeah. skills, you can do that. And then restaurants have done it. You just then you put the yeah. QR code for the website onto uh, onto the table, and you can do it there again. And again, because it's online, you can change it in seconds, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. can just oh, oh we're out of that, or we couldn't get supplies for this food product, or we added this drink, or you know, whatever you're doing, change it that day. Just change it up and it's done. Easy. Uh, no, I love that. That's, it's, it's, it's such an underutilized technology that, uh, that, that I, you know, I know from my personal experience in hotels that I've been at, as soon as we've implemented a robust SMS platform, you know, through Alice or, or just, you know, through other services, uh, it's completely changed the game for us in terms of guest communication, even communicating around the property, because it doesn't just stay between the front desk or reservations and the guest. You know, suddenly you've got all of this additional communication going on on the property, and it just makes the operation that much more um, robust. Oh, I, I, absolutely. I mean, um, are people able to, in this podcast, people can see us? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, on the YouTube yeah. channel, yeah. Great, so I mean, like quite literally, we put out this like room SMS communication for guests, so it's mm -hmm. like, how do you do it? And like, whoever you're using, every provider can do this. You, know, you can create all your communications. Here's an example of a room service menu being texted mm -hmm. to a guest, right? And, and what I was referring to is Google Sites, and we use it for our intranet. This, mm -hmm. this is our Alice intranet. It's got nothing to do with hotels, but it's easy to build. We can change it in seconds. We've got all our information, and you'll have a lot less information. You just need your room service menu, your mm -hmm. spa opening hours if you have one. Where have the concierge build a page and what restaurants to go to and what their, Huge. what their COVID guidelines are. And then you take the link and you send it as an automated message to your guests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those of you are, uh, are listening to the podcast, head over to the YouTube channel. Uh, you'll be able to see what Alex just shared. It's uh, it's phenomenal. Um, so look, we're getting to the end of the show here. Um, is there, are there any resources that uh, you and your organization have been able to leverage that have kind of helped you through this COVID time that, that might be good for other people to look at? I know we talked about a couple HTNG uh, and others. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else that's available to people that you're, um, you're able to share? You know, for us, it's been mostly using our peers. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm fortunate to have a really great group of um, founders around us in, in both the competing and the um, complementary products that we mm -hmm. put out. Um, so, you know, I've spoken to the founders of 
of Muse and Seven Rooms and, and Avio and all these companies. We just kind of got together. What are you doing? And I think the best power you have right now is shared knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess this is not a resource, but if you're not speaking to the 10 hotels in your area, right. you should be. I mean, like you're all focusing on bringing the area back first before getting back to who's going to win, mm -hmm. who's going to win one and two and three. Um, otherwise, no, I do think h g is a fantastic, fantastic resource. Um, I'd love it if you check out what we've put out on our website and it's houseplatform.com. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and actually for what it's worth, maybe my answer is not so great. So if you have a better answer, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear it and send it, send it to the Alice team. Yeah, no, I, I think, yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Use your network. Talk to people. It's so easy in these times to get, um, to get very insular, right? And just to just to, to worry about, you know, yourself and your own situation. And that's natural. And I totally understand why people would do that. But, you know, as this is a people business, you got to get out there and talk to people. Uh, there's so many great platforms to be able to do that. I mean, LinkedIn right now, if you're not leveraging that uh, and talking to people and joining groups and, and, and engaging in conversations, I think you're missing a real good opportunity just to, whether it's just connect with people or just to, just to give you a different perspective on what's going on right now. Uh, it's huge. Yeah, and you have to divide and conquer. Pick, you mm -hmm. know, pick a team of 10 people in the hotel who are responsible for learning and pick each each one that someone needs to learn about. And you focus on the security, right? And you focus on what other hotels are doing and you focus on guest communication and come together and, and talk about it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so before we wrap here, I've got uh, one last question for you. I ask everybody, um, it's kind of a signature question for the show here. Um, are there any best practices uh, or tools available that people could implement right now from your perspective that would give them the most bang for their time and their effort? Um, yeah, so I think a few things. So on the highest level, I think in these times that are difficult, it's easy to kind of, kind of contract and lose what made you special in your brand proposition. And it's like you stop looking after your people, right? You get afraid. So I think what we've seen is the hotels are going to do the best of those that keep their staff happy and engaged as their best practice. I mean, they don't want to be mentioned because they don't want the credit for it, but there's a hotel group we work with that have literally provided free lunch to their staff and their staff's families throughout the COVID crisis, lodging if they need it, um, doubled health insurance. I mean, and so it's like, it doesn't need to be the expensive stuff. It could be the small stuff, but at the end of the day, you're only as good as your employees. And if you don't give your employees engaged and make you the preferred workplace, literally the preferred workplace that's coming out of this, you're going to be in the same trouble where you're struggling to hire. And if you don't have, you're struggling to train people because they're not as good. And then you're struggling to perform as a hotel, right? Yeah. yeah. Simple truth. Better the people, better the business, better the guest, right? Just treat people well. Exactly. Um, otherwise, you know, I think we've seen that hotels have to be flexible, right? You know, suddenly the beaches get closed and you have 25% less occupancy. You have, you have to be nimble. They're changing mm -hmm. rules every week. Um, and so it's like making small investments in things you can change, I think are great versus big investments in things you can't change, which is why I like messaging and creating a room service menu because you can change it, mm -hmm. right? It, it's not printing a thousand menus that that might no longer be relevant mm -hmm. in a week's time. Right. Yeah. Love that. Um, Alex, if people want to get a hold of you or learn more about Alice, uh, where can they go? Um, so our website is aliceplatform.com. Uh, my LinkedIn, I'm very engaged on. So please add me on LinkedIn. I'd love to connect with you. Um, it's a great place to connect with other hoteliers too. And as you said, find employment through LinkedIn mm -hmm. where we do most of our hiring. Um, but on, on alicesplatform.com, you know, I encourage you to check out um, our blog for the content we're putting out. And then just reach out to us. And if you need it, my email is alex at aliceplatform.com. Love it. Alex, thank you so much for taking the time today. This was hey, fantastic. Hey, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, this was awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, we'll link to everything in the show notes uh, if people want to get a hold of you. And uh, I guess let's just leave it right there. I appreciate it. Thanks All for right. the invite. Thanks for listening to the Proven Principles Podcast with Adam Knight. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss a show. The podcast is brought to you by Knowing Hospitality, a full service hotel management company that puts your performance first by rethinking the management model. Visit knowinghospitality.com to learn more. Until next time.